everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet this Christmas heart bauble. Uh, and this is it that you see here. This is pattern number seven in my seven days of Christmas baubles collection, which you can find here on my YouTube channel as well as on my blog. The free written crochet pattern is found on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. And for this video, you are going to need a copy of the color chart that you will find there on my blog, richtexturescrochet.com. I'll provide the direct link for you there in this video, uh, in the notes for this video. And you're going to need this chart in the video. I'm not going to work through uh, the entire color chart, but I'll give you a couple lines so that you know how to go on and continue to work it for the pattern. Uh, you can also from there purchase the ad-free PDF if you so desire. And uh, feel free to also head on over to my Etsy or Revelry shop and give this pattern some love <laughs> and, uh, and help me spread the Christmas heart bauble around. So for this pattern, as far as materials, you'll need that chart from my blog. You'll also need a plastic DIY bauble if you choose. This one has a 10 millimeter circumference, or sorry, a 10 inch circumference. And also you could grab an older one that you want to upcycle. The other option is I'll provide the variation here in the pattern and on the video is if you would like to use a little bit of fiber fill, you can also stuff the bobble when completed as well. You're also going to need a worsted weight yarn. I'm going to be using the Lion Brand Heartland yarn, uh, but you just need a worsted weight yarn, two colors, and about 50 yards of each color. You're going to need a crochet hook, a four millimeter crochet hook, and also a stitch marker because we will be working in continuous rounds. So thank you once again so much for joining me. Please, I invite you to subscribe to this channel. It is updated weekly, and uh, I look forward to seeing you again. But uh, for right now, let's uh, grab some yarn and our hooks and our Christmas baubles, and we'll learn how to crochet the heart Christmas bauble together. For your pattern today, to begin, you can either begin by making a magic ring or you may begin by chaining four and joining with a slip stitch in that first chain to form your ring. Uh, regardless, you need to have a ring to begin your pattern. And once you have made your ring, you're going to start by chaining one and into that ring work six single crochet stitches. Now in this pattern, you will not be joining at the end of each round. So you're going to use your stitch marker to mark the first stitch of each round. The other thing to note about this pattern is that you will always be working in the back loop. To work in the back loop, you're going to take a look at the top of your stitch and you will see this V. The back loop is always that horizontal bar that is furthest away from you. So you'll always insert your hook under that one bar only. That is your back loop only. For round two, again, you're not going to join, but in that first single crochet stitch, you're going to work two single crochets and you're going to repeat that all the way around. Always working in the back loop again. At the end of this round, you're going to have a total of 12 stitches. For round three, you are going to work two single crochet stitches into that first stitch, followed by one single crochet in the next. You're going to repeat that all the way around, two single crochets in the next stitch, followed by one in the next, 
repeat it all the way around at the end of this round, you're going to have a total of 18 stitches. For round four, you are going to work two single crochet stitches into that next stitch. Followed by one single crochet stitch in each of the next two. Repeat that two in the next stitch, followed by one single crochet in each of the next two. You'll continue that all the way around. At the end of this round, you'll have a total of 24 stitches. For round five, working in the back loop only, you're going to work two single crochet stitches in the next stitch, followed by one single crochet in each of the next three stitches. Repeat that. Continue all the way around, and at the end of this round, you're going to have a total of 30 stitches. For round six, you're going to work two single crochet stitches in the next stitch, followed by one single crochet in each of the next four. Repeat that all the way around. And at the end of this round, you will have a total of 36 stitches. For round seven, working in the back loop only, single crochet, work two single crochet stitches into that first stitch followed by one single crochet in each of the next five. Repeat that all the way around. And at the end of this round, you will have a total of 42 stitches. Eight. This is the final of your increase rounds. You're going to single crochet two in that next stitch, followed by one single crochet in each of the next six. Repeat that all the way around, two single crochet in the next stitch followed by one single crochet in each of the next six. At the end of this round, you will have a total of 48 stitches. And this time, at the end of round eight, you're going to go and uh, need to get a copy of that chart because you're now going to be working through that chart. Now, to work the chart, you will do the following. Each little square in this chart equals one stitch. So you can see I have 48 columns because there are 48 stitches in my round. So there will be one stitch in each all the way around. And I have a total of 10 rows um, because we're going to work this through rounds 9 through to 19. Okay, so for a total of 10 rows. Now, in my design, I have chosen to make my color A, which is this white, is my red color, my red wood. And then my color B is my great sand dunes, which is this 
tan color and I should have mentioned that at the beginning of the video uh, I'm using the redwood color and the great sand dunes color by uh, Lion Brand in that Heartland yarn so each single crochet stitch is equal to one square so for instance for my first row you start at the bottom of your chart okay and you're going to work up you're always going to read the chart from the same direction so I'm going to be reading my chart from right to left and I'm going to be working it so I'm going to work that first round right to left and then I'm going to come back to the beginning again uh, because I'm always working in rounds I'm not continuous rounds I'm not uh, changing direction at all so read through right to left come back start again right to left in the next round so for this first round, round nine, if I take a look, in my color A, I'm going to be working 46 stitches, followed by two stitches in my color B. So I'm going to go ahead and work that now, beginning with the 46 stitches in my color A, followed by two in my color B. Now I'm actually going to stop one stitch prior before the color change and I'll meet you back here and show you how to change color. So I'll actually be changing my color in that 40, uh, that 46th stitch into the in the top of it. Okay, so go ahead if you're crocheting along with me, work um, those first 46 stitches, meet me back here and we'll change color together. So I'm now working stitch number 46 and in this stitch I want to change color because my next two stitches are going to be worked in my color B. So to change my color into that 46th stitch I'm going to work half of my single crochet. So I'm going to insert my hook, I'm going to yarn over and drop a loop. I now have half of my stitch worked but I want to change color so I'm going to let go and drop my color A. I'm going to pick up my color B and place it on my hook and then draw that color through to complete my single crochet stitch. I'm then just going to pull it tight like so. So now I'm all ready in my color B to complete the next two stitches in that round. So there's one, and as I am working, I'm actually working over top of my two tails there. One, so that I don't have to worry about weaving a tail in, and two, I'm going to want to carry my color A along with me, because in a moment, I'm going to pick it up again. So there's my second stitch, and that brings me to the end of my round nine. Now if I go back to my chart and I take a look, I've completed round 9, I'm now going up to my round 10, and I'm going to continue with 3 stitches in my color B, followed by 3 stitches in my color A. So I'm going to remove my stitch marker, work 3 stitches in my color B, all the while I'm bringing my tails and my non-working yarn along with me. Now in my third stitch I know that I want to switch back to my color A because the stitch after it is in color A. So I work half of my single crochet, then I'm going to drop my color B, pick up my color A, place it on my hook and pull it through. I'm now ready to continue with my color A. It is that easy. And if you look at the back, you can see it's just nice and neat and tidy. Okay? You'll want to make sure that your non-working yarn, you're pulling it through, you don't want it too tight. You don't want it to pull your stitches together or cause the fabric to buckle. But you also don't want it to be too loose, otherwise it will show through. Okay, so now with my color B on my hook, I'm going to work my next three stitches. But in my third stitch, I'm going to switch back to my color B because I have one stitch here in my color B. So drop it, 
pick up my color B, put it on my hook and pull through. Now this next stitch, I'm only going to work half a stitch in my color B because I want to switch right back to my color A. Next, I can see I have five colors, or five, uh, sorry, three stitches in my color A, followed by five in my color B. So there's one, two, and in that third stitch, I'm switching back to my color B. I'm then going to continue and work five in my color B. And that fifth one, switch back to my color A. So that's all there is to following this chart. You're just going to continue along that line. You're now into a repeat. repeat. So three in color A, uh, one in B, three in A, five in B. Continue that all the way across, end with your color B, then go back to the next round and work that round according to the chart. So I'm going to leave you to go ahead and do that. I'm not going to work the entire chart in this video, but um, once you have completed that, and once I have, I'll meet you back here and we will continue with the decrease rounds together. So I have now worked my chart in its entirety. And so you should have something that looks like this. You have a little bit of a sleeve, you have some tails there, but that's okay. Now at, um, so this is at the end of round 19. Now at the end of 19, if you are choosing to use one of these craft bubbles or your upcycling one, you're going to want to insert that into the sleeve now. And we're going to continue our pattern working around it. If you are choosing to fill it with fiber fill, I would wait uh, until maybe round 24 before you stuff it. It'll just make a little bit make it a little bit easier to manage. Okay, so we are going to continue in and working in our rounds here, and I'm going to be working over top of my tail just so I can tuck it in. What we're going to do is for round 20 working in that back loop only we are going to single crochet two stitches together followed by one single crochet in each of the next six stitches Repeat that single crochet two together. And if you're not familiar with the single crochet two together, you're going to insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and drop a loop. Insert your hook into the next, yarn over and drop a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all three. So single crochet two together, single crochet in each of the next six stitches and at the end of this round you're going to have a total of 42 stitches. Now for round 21 you're going to single crochet two together followed by one single crochet in each of the next five. Repeat that, single crochet two together, followed by one in each of the next five, all the way around, and at the end of round 21, you will have a total of 36 stitches. For round 22, you're going to single crochet two together, and work one single crochet in each of the next four. Oh, and I should go back and always remember to put your stitch marker back in. 
repeat that single crochet two together and one in each of the next four. Continue that all the way around and at the end of this round you're going to have a total of 30 stitches. For round 23 you're going to single crochet two together in the next two stitches followed by a one single crochet stitch in each of the next three. Repeat that all the way around, single crochet two together followed by one in each of the next three. And at the end of this round you're going to have a total of 24 stitches. And round 24, you're going to single crochet two together, followed by one single crochet in each of the next two stitches. Repeat that all the way around, single crochet two together, and one single crochet in each of the next two stitches. And at the end of this round, you're going to have a total of 18 stitches. Now if you are working around the bobble, that last round we just did, round 24, is your final decrease round. If you have chosen to stuff it with some fiber fill, at this time it's a good time now to stuff it. And then you're going to work two more rounds of decrease stitches. So you'll work around 25 where you single crochet two together followed by a single crochet in the next stitch. Repeat that. And then uh, you'll do round 26 where you work a st uh, single crochet two together all the way around. At that time, when you have finished, you are going to fasten off. I simply join my yarn in the back loop only with a slip stitch in that first stitch. Fasten off, leaving a little bit of a long, long tail. Then you're going to take your yarn needle and you're going to weave around the top of your bobble. This is going to create a little bit of a drawstring. Just like so. And when you come back to the beginning, you're going to pull that tight and you're going to fasten it. And I like to fasten it with just a simple knot there up at the top. And then I'm going to weave in my end. Just like so. Clip off the remaining yarn. Reattach the top of your bobble and that's all there is to creating this beautiful Christmas heart ornament. So thank you so much once again for joining me. I invite you to subscribe and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Have fun and happy crocheting. Bye!